Hello, Oscillator Sync here. Today we are making a long overdue return to the Norand Morphus to see what it can achieve today in my modular rig. This is the second video in a series where we are taking a look at the Morphos. In the first video, we made use of it in a kind of conventional monosynth environment, which it did a very lovely job in. Um, but it is a module which um, encourages you to do more extreme modulation. There's all sorts of things we can do with cross modulation, audio rate modulation built into the contextual modulators. And so uh, today, we're going to take it to some more kind of extreme places. In that first video, I did a kind of general overview and sort of sound review of the Morphos, listening to the different wave shapes, talking about how the contextual modulators work. And although I'll kind of talk about them a little bit as I use them in this video, I'm not going to go into as much depth in terms of how they work. So if you want to check out that video first to get kind of an idea of how the Morphos works, I'll put a link to that in the description of this video. So my goal for this patch is to take the Morphos and use it as the only uh, kind of synth oscillator in this patch. But by making use of the various different ways that we can modulate it internally, plus the various cross modulations you can do between the two oscillators in the module, um, by routing this module maybe through a, a bunch of low pass gates and filters, bringing them in in stereo, um, Hopefully we can create something that's quite complex using just the two oscillators that are sat inside Morphos. Now I know my viewership are very, very observant people, so it won't have escaped your notice that I have a bunch of stuff already pre-patched here. So let's just quickly go over what we have. So let's first of all talk about the one thing that you'll be hearing that isn't the Morphos, and that is uh, the two HP VCO here, and this is just set up to do kind of a kick drum thing. So if I start PAMS here, so that is PAMS, uh, and this channel is doing a um, envelope curve that's going into the volts proactive just to give it that attack. Uh, on the triangle output, which is going into a low pass gate, which is receiving the same uh, envelope shape that the um, the pitch is, and that's just going out into the aux of XPAN, which is then routed into my output. So that's um, the only other thing we're going to hear in this patch, which is not Morphos. So in terms of Morphos itself, it is uh, taking its outputs into these buffered malts at the top of the palette case, and they are just coming into each side of XPAN here. So at the moment, they're just doing a rather lovely stereo drone. Yes, the tuned together um, triangle waves at the moment. Lovely stuff. Again, that's just then been rooted into um, my output there. So as for the rest of this nest of wires here, this is kind of my sequencer of sorts. So what we've got here, and this is duplicated for each side of Morphos, because it's obviously we've got two oscillator cores in here. So I've got PAMS, which is creating a, a random uh, sequence, uh, just a random CV sequence. There's some Euclidean stuff going on there as well, just to make the rhythm a little more, bit more interesting. This is going into Quadract here on this channel here. And then the output of that channel is going into Disting here, which is a quantizer for each side. So what that allows me to do, if I just turn up one side here and just yeah, it's pan to the middle, it's fine. Uh, so if I start up Pamela, because the attenuator is before the quantizer, this means that I can alter the range of my sequence while still keeping it in tune. And I can do that for each side. So if I want to bring it back down, I can kind of do that. Right, which is cool. Uh, just turn that one back down. So the other thing that we've got here on these two channels, for the left side and the right side, is uh, this is controlling the loop parameter on PAMS. So at the moment we've got quite a short 
repeating sequence right. Yep. Uh, if I want to make that longer, I can turn this one up. So that's a longer version of that sequence. If I turn it down all the way, it becomes just random and doesn't loop anymore. So this is kind of a bit like um, Turing Machine. So I can let new randomness seed in there and then lock it. So it's just a cool way of using uh, PAMs with a quantizer um, to kind of emulate the kind of Turing machine kind of workflow, uh, which I think works very well for this sort of techno kind of uh, sequence. Right, so that's enough of what's pre-patched. Uh, let's um, patch some more stuff, shall we? Okay, let's start throwing some modulation at this. So uh, kick turn down, and we'll just turn up one of the oscillators just for the moment. Okay, so um, the first bit of modulation I want to talk about is probably this through zero FM. Uh, so through zero FM means that whenever I turn this control up, it's going to be FM modulated um, linearly through zero by the other side. Now, if the other side is playing the same uh, melody, then uh, it will just kind of give you that richness uh, of FM. But because the two sides are playing different things, as we turn this up, things can get pretty interesting uh, and um, because um, it's going to be affected by whatever sequence is going on on this side if we turn this up higher there's some fun things that we can get going on in there but we probably don't want this going the entire time, I don't think. Um, get new seems in there. Uh, so, um, because we have our contextual modulators on the Morphos, um, we can uh, do more than just turn this knob up and down. Uh, so if I just grab a patch cable. Um, by default, if this um, CV input for the through zero FM is white, uh, this just acts as a standard CV control. So I can turn up the amount here and then control it remotely using, say, at end here. Um, but we also have two other modes in here. The first is an LFO. So you can kind of hear that swooping in and out. But the one I think is really interesting with um, the 30 FM is actually the final mode here, uh, which is the envelope. So now the input of the um, 30 FM CV is expecting a trigger, and that will trigger an envelope which will throw the um, uh, the through zero FM knob in the direction set by the amount and we can set the rate of that envelope as well. So let's grab a sequence from PAMS and do just that. So I'll grab a patch cable here, plug that in there. I can hear that that's been sort of triggered in time. So let's mess with what Pam is doing here. So I'm just going to come in here and set it to be a short trigger. Cool. Um, maybe let's get a uh, Euclidean pattern going on here. Uh, let's try a Maybe 
this one running faster, I think. And then let's maybe um, duplicate that trick on the other side as well. So throw it off to one side. Oops. So we'll take another um, channel of pams here. Set the input here to be envelope mode. It's triggering too much, obviously, so let's again get a um, Euclidean pattern in here, maybe with some random skips as well. Obviously, the uh, uh, the left hand side is generally a lower um, oscillator at the moment, so we're getting those sort of ripples happening. But you can hear occasionally when we get both of them happening once we get that really extreme kind of sound going on there as well. Fun. Right. Um, so the next place that we can do some pretty um, fun extreme uh, modulation uh, is by applying some um, audio rate modulation as well. Uh, and I'm going to try that on the wave control here. So um, if we um, put this over to, I'm going to just go down to just one. There we go. Um, if I set this uh, to the orange setting here on the wave input and go across to type here, kind of hear it straight away there, right? So now we've got audio rate modulation. of the wave parameter here. So we're going between the different waveforms here. And we can tune this in. something um, that's kind of in tune but again we probably don't want that on the entire time we probably want to give it some of that action instead so when we're in um, LFO mode here with the contextual modulators when it's in the orange mode here the CV input is going to control the amount um, so uh, let's make use maybe of um, stages to give us a uh, envelope that we can put in there. So let's grab patch cable, go into this gate here. 
and grab the output of that there and pop it into the wave. And then turning up the amount will give us So uh, again, let's go into that channel on PAMS and let's mess with the uh, controls here a little bit. Let's make it a trigger again, so it's not holding. I reckon something that's sort of fast and gappy would sound cool there, so let's... skip that's just the one oper uh, operator <laughs> one oscillator at the moment hearing quite a lot of different timbres in there and if we bring in the other one as well perhaps we can do the same thing on that side as well with a different pattern I think that'd be cool We're now creating these more complex timbres on each side. The 30 FM is going to be doing more as well, so we might just want to readjust the amount 30 FM on each side here. Kind of already does sound like it's more than just one uh, synth perhaps but i want to make it more obviously more than one synth so um let's think about how we can take this and make more of it so at the moment we are essentially uh droning uh the uh the morphos here it kind of doesn't sound so much like it's droning when we have stuff going because of all of that modulation that's going on there uh, but let's uh, make it a little less uh, droney perhaps and I think the thing we can do here is 
take the output of the Morphos and run it through some low pass gates which are being pinged at the same rate as uh, the uh, modulation is coming in on the 30FM and the wave on each of them and that should accentuate those particular um, aspects and then we can take um, one side of it and then also run it through a filter um, to run down the middle or something like that I think. Okay, let's give that a go. So I'm just going to turn uh, that down on there and unpatch the X pan here. We'll probably use it again in just a second. Um, but we need to do something else first. So first things first, um, let's uh, take each of those outputs and run it into the Takar low pass gate here. So we can take the malt here to that side and the malt here to the other side like that. And now we want to grab um, some gates to open up the low pass gate here. So um, I guess we can just take them straight from the through zero FM outputs there. That probably makes sense. Will it reach with a short green stack cable? It might do. It won't do. Okay, never mind. <laughs> uh, okay, we'll have to use the longer ones. Okay, so let's take um, this one and go into a stack cable, stack cable back into there to ping the through zero FM envelope and then into the CV input here. And then similarly on this side. Yep. Lovely stuff. And then we can take the output of that, maybe back into X pan, that might work. Dun, 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 dun. There we go, back into here. So now what we've got here are just the hits where the through zero FM is getting. Uh, tapped by uh, PAMS to open up its envelope on Morphos, which means we get these lovely kind of percussive plonks. Which are cool, I think. Right, let's do the same thing, uh, but for that um, audio rate FM on the uh, wave. So we want to take the uh, gates that are coming into stages. Uh, we can use, uh, what can we use? I guess this low pass gate over here will do. If I have enough cables. So we'll take um, the output of each of the malts for the oscillator. A longer cable into there. Great, 
Okay, and then we can just take those out into the CV and put half the low pass gate. accentuating the different bits of modulation that's going into it. So I think probably to finish that off, it'd be good just to have like a, um, a version that's going into just a filter. Maybe I'll take it into the stereo filter here so it has a bit of a width to it even still. And we can use a different, he says checking, yes we've got one uh, channel of pams left so we can use a different uh, rhythm to that as well and just have that sort of whomping up a little bit. Yeah, okay, let's do that. So I'll just take one side here, like that, and we'll go into the input of the dual filter from ADAC there. And I'll take the low pass out put and bring it into stereo inputs in case I want to use another mono one on buddy okay so we now have that there and now we can just give it some envelope so I will
So, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's all just Morphos. We're throwing various bits of modulation at it. And then using the low pass gates being triggered by that modulation to emphasize those various little bits. good fun. Morphos likes it when you throw loads of modulation at it. So, uh, before I get lost in uh, this force of the floor uh, fun, thank you so much for joining me. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you leave it a thumbs up. That's always massively appreciated. And make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss out on any upcoming synth fun. But otherwise, until next time, take care.